Um, and uh, please, uh, Javier, um, come up and join us here. Um, trade was very well in introduced here by, by Lena as an important factor um, that can link the, the ALIS priorities uh, to the sustainability um, outcomes. And what, what uh, role could, could trade therefore play uh, to catalyze uh, uh, sustainability? Thank or you. is it such a role to play for trade mm -hmm. at all? Thank you. I guess we all agree in the room that uh, policies to promote sustainability have to take into account teleconnections, which is as the, the fact that policies and interventions in one side of the world, in one country. Uh, Do you hear? Well, or should we ask Javier to speak a bit okay. closer to the microphone? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, good. So I was talking about teleconnections. Now closer to the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, teleconnections are, are referring to the fact that uh, policies and interventions in one side of the world or in one sector have enormous implications for sustainability in other parts of the world and in other sectors. And probably the most important teleconnection that we can think of is, is trade. Uh, trade is underlying all the economic, the global economic system, and it's like the blood and the catalyzer of all this global economy that we are living in. And one of the problems for policymakers and researchers. Uh, in terms of uh, dealing with the uh, trade system is that it's very complex. It's a web of um, a lot of stakeholders with very different interests, and different capabilities, policies implemented, and it's very difficult to look at the causality and the relationship between all these stakeholders and uh, the benefits and the, and the impacts that trade is, trade is causing. So at, at SEI, uh, we are uh, working in ma mapping these uh, supply chains and the these trade relationships all around the world. Uh, wow, with idea, that's a nice picture. Uh, with the idea that um, ju just by, by providing with transparency in these supply chain um, systems that we have in the world, we can actually engage with the different stakeholders and we can look at the trade-offs and inform or help policymakers to take hard choices. So, for example, this is about the supply chain of soybeans from Brazil. And is depicting, uh, well, this is a simplification of the supply chain. So, in, <laughs> yeah, believe me, this is like thousands of producers on the left uh, that we are uh, grouping by regions in Brazil, uh, thousands of exporters, importers, um, carriers, uh, shipping brokers, dealers with, of, the, of, the supply, of this commodity, and finally the countries of consumption. So what, what we are trying to do is to understand all these impacts and all these relationships so we can engage with these people uh, along the whole supply chain and, and see at how to improve the sustainability in, of the trade system. Um, a more simplified version of this is actually the next slide, uh, in which, which is just showing the relationship between the producer of soy in Brazil and the country of consumption. So up there you have the places, the concrete places where China is consuming soy from in Brazil for different years, and the same for the, for the European Union. <coughs> So by looking at all these small circles, what is going on in those places, you can actually start talking about not only transparency, but accountability, which stakeholders are actually driving the processes that can be seen in those, in those places. But uh, after that, I think that the most important message of, of this um, short presentation is that even if the, all these stakeholders have different policies that are often not driven, like Kale said, by uh, environmental concerns, for example, we, there is a, actually the option of harnessing these already existing policies for, the better, for improving the sustainability along these supply chains. And I'm, I can provide with one example. Uh, most part of the companies in the world dealing with farming commodities uh, have signed this zero deforestation commitments last year in New York. Uh, so they, they are uh, saying that by 2020 they, they will uh, stop deforestation in their supply chains. Obviously these companies are not doing this mostly for environmental reasons, they are doing it because they want to secure their supply chains and they are fearing seen by consumers and other stakeholders like uh, risk or, yeah, we're talking about corporate responsibility here. However, these um, commitments are going to change completely the supply chains of hundreds of, of commodities. Uh, they are going to change how farmers are producing, how consumers are buying. Um, if this commitment is really going to happen, it's going to change completely the trade system. And then... So this, is, this is like when Unilever is, is saying they source everything uh, sustainably. Yeah. Palm oil, for example. It's because the globe is not big enough otherwise to, for, for, for them to, to, to supply. To survive, yeah. 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 
and, and there we have options to actually think in other agendas, uh, policy agendas, and use their commitment to actually uh, drive um, positive impacts for, for sustainability along the supply chains. Can I? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Javier, I was reminded of uh, what uh, Kate Minderhood from Solidaridad said uh, the other week when she was visiting us. She said uh, uh, sustainability is something that needs to happen in a place. Um, mm. And she was then referring to that with all these supply chain approaches, there are limitations to what they can actually achieve uh, in terms of um, livelihood options and so on for the local community. So considering that most of the world agricultural production is not internationally traded and um, with this input from Kate, what would you say about the limitations and possibilities of, of supply chain approaches like the zero deforestation policy? Mm. I think like uh, any policy or intervention of any of these stakeholders along the supply chain is driven by one, sometimes like zero deforestation commitment or several or few um, goals. Like it can be zero carbon emissions or it can be um, production come from smallholders. But there are very few policies that are actually integral and see at what is going on along the supply chain in different levels, like in the local scale, national scale and global scale. So whenever a stakeholder is implementing a policy or an intervention, there is an enormous risk that there is like, uh, unintended consequences of that policy. And we can see that with the zero deforestation commitments, because it's very likely that in some cases, smallholders, for example, are going to be affected negatively by these zero deforestation commitments. Uh, and strong focus in one dimension of the environmental, of the social environmental system may be detrimental to, to others. And I think we have to take care on, uh, about all these policies that be, are being implemented now. Same with certification, for example. Thanks a lot, Kavir. Uh, it's obviously complex, although there are opportunities here to, to, to um, improve, uh, to, use, to use trade actually to, imp to, to, to green supply chains. Uh, but there are potentially negative side effects of that uh, in terms of equity and, 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 and social issues. Yep. Yeah. Please um, join us here, Javier, and uh, we invite uh, our next uh, participant, uh, Goi Han. Um, we know moving from Brazil and uh, the Amazon over to uh, China and Asia and China. And um, 